Good morning, everyone. Welcome to video storytelling for your business. Welcome uh, to everyone who is attending live, uh, but also a special welcome to everyone who's listening to the recording in this new year in 2019. What a great way to get to get started. We're very excited to have Tim Johnson here. Uh, Tim Johnson, as you can see from what's on your screen, is with Positive Light Media. Uh, and this is Amy Gentleman speaking. I'm with the National Institute for Social Media, and we are the proud and excited hosts of today's webinar. Really excited to have connected with Tim on this on this great, uh, great topic. So just a couple of logistical uh, points we wanna make. This webinar is being recorded. So if you are unable to stay for the entire presentation uh, or uh, if you wanna to listen to it again at a later date, in within a day or so, you'll get an email with a link to the recording. So know that that is coming and know that all of our webinars uh, in the future, or even if you go to the NISM website, we have actually a whole library of recordings like these great people from the NISM community uh, that have come together to, to share information, information with us. So know that that is available to you. Uh, I don't wanna spend um, any more time talking uh, uh, to you uh, about all this housekeeping stuff because I'm so excited to hear from Tim. He's got great content for us. So with that, I will just tell you that uh, Tim with Positive Light Media is a storyteller. If you read his bio, you probably got that feeling. Uh, so it's, it's not just a technical presentation today. I'm really excited to hear how uh, he is going to be able to help all of us who are in a business or own a business provide content to our uh, customers and potential customers in a new, different, and meaningful way. So really excited for this. And, and with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Tim. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Amy. Thanks so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. All right. So let's get right into this today. Thank you to everybody who's listening online, either live or on the recording. And just want to remind you today that the best way to make sure that you have a good experience is to ask questions. So uh, like we said here today, just uh, make sure that you chat those into Amy Jalman and we'll deal with those at the end of the uh, at the end of the presentation here. I do see a question uh, about is there supposed to be video and you should be able to see my screen right now and I will get started. So today we're going to be talking about video storytelling for your business. And within that, we're going to be showing examples of some of that and uses of video storytelling. We're gonna introduce you to a couple of key members of your video storytelling team. And from there, we're going to be talking about the length of your video and uh, some kind of unique ways to think about that. So moving on from there, we will talk about something that's obviously very important, which is using your video online. How are we going to optimize the video for search engine optimization? And from there, we'll talk about how transcription and captioning can play a role in that, as well as, uh, as, well as other benefits of transcription and captioning. Finally, we're gonna wrap it up by talking about the cost of video storytelling. I'm sure that you're all wondering about that, and we will uh, plot some things on a curve for you so that you can understand what various things cost, as well as giving you some good ideas about how to uh, really maximize your investment and get the most out of whatever it is that you can afford to do. All right, so let's get started here. Video storytelling, how is it different from video ads, Facebook Live and other video options? Well, my answer to that typically is that it's not terribly different because those are just ways to deploy video. But when we talk specifically about video storytelling, we're talking about a video that really takes on a narrative form. It's got a beginning, a middle, and an, and an end. And uh, the, uh, the video conveys heart and emotion like no other medium can. So to get us thinking about that, I'm going to show what is a national example. 
and this is from our good friends at Folgers, and there are, it's just a great example of how video can convey a heart and emotion, and it tugs at the heartstrings. So let's take a look at that, and uh, then we will talk about it on the other side here. Pass the highways and the river Soon I'll be coming back again The things that matter most happen one morning and one cup at a time. I just love that example because it's a great example of how video can tug at the heartstrings. After all, who among us can't relate to saving up for a really important purchase, whether it was uh, as we were a kid and dutifully saving up our allowance to get that special toy, or perhaps it was as an adult saving up for the purchase of our first home or, or an important gift for a loved one. But one of the main reasons that I want to show you a really well-produced national spot like that is so that we can start to think about how much can be accomplished in a really short time frame. And like we mentioned in the agenda, we're going to talk more about length later in the webinar, but it's just a wonderful example of, of how much can be done with uh, 30 seconds. Our next example here that we're going to show just a portion of is a video that Positive Light Media produced for Luther Seminary's Give Day in 2017. The theme of that Give Day was Grace Your It, and the goal for Luther Seminary was to share examples of how grace gets passed along to others. And by using several small stories to accomplish that goal, Luther was able to really bring uh, bring some good publicity to their giving campaign. And let's take a look at just a portion of this so that we can see how we accomplished that. So that should give you just a taste of what we did there, but that video used several small stories to accomplish the goal of bringing visibility to Luther Seminary's Give campaign and really uh, using it as a way to frame up the conversation and draw attention to all the good that they're doing in the world with stories that people can relate to. Because again, this is a case where I'm sure we can all relate to a time either in our childhood or or our adult life where we felt left out. And uh, storytelling is so effective as a way to uh, help them for this campaign. Our next example is a bit different than the previous two in that this is really a more uh, business fo focused example. Sam Smith is a speaker and trainer for the Prouty Project and he needed a video for his company that would motivate a potential client to think that Sam is the one to speak at their upcoming function or to train at their upcoming function. So we'll take a look at this and uh, see how he accomplished that. Often nowadays I get a lot of disappointment when I show up to speak somewhere that I'm not that Sam Smith. When an organization brings me in to keynote their event, 
they're not only getting great energy from the stage and great authenticity, but they're getting real personal stories. So Wesley is our youngest, youngest of five. He's currently 10. This was taken a couple years ago when he was eight. He's our only hockey player. And I used to tell him uh, before any practice, any game, didn't matter what it was, I go, hey bud, all you gotta do, have fun, play hard. You go out there, you have the greatest time you possibly can, and you leave it all on the ice. Have fun, play hard. Then he was playing in a game a couple years ago, and he went down headfirst into the boards. Probably the scariest moment of my life. Turns out he did have a concussion. His neck and back were fine, but that was a huge, wake-up call for me and Wesley. <laughs> and now I changed it to, hey bud, all you gotta do is have fun, play hard, and be smart. Okay? I look at the world in, in terms of metaphors, and I see everything in front of me is an opportunity to learn from and a connection to make to business. At the so again, I really love that example and one of the things that i think is really neat about that and i think it's uh important to take just a moment to talk about this is that in sam's first little quote there from his interview that we used in the video he talks about the power of storytelling and obviously today we're talking about video storytelling for your business but i think it's important to take a moment just to think about how impactful it is to use stories as you interact with people in your business, whether we're talking about video or not. And then the other thing that I think was really wonderful about that portion that we showed there is that Sam tells a really compelling story about his son on the, on the hockey ice that's really memorable. And it gets us thinking about uh, how how we might use him as uh, someone to speak at our upcoming function. So it was both good for the video and good for his keynote that we could use the power of storytelling. Our next example is a testimonial that was given for Waddell Dental. And this example is a bit different than the previous ones as well, in that the previous videos were more complex and they showed B-roll and other footage of things going on. But a story can also come in the form of a talking head because one thing that all businesses and all organizations can benefit from is testimonials. So as we watch this, little piece, I would encourage you to think about what is it that your product or business does and how does it help people? And I think you'll get a sense of how uh, Param did that for Waddell Dental in this testimonial. I was coming to Dr. Waddell and my wife was going to a different dentist and uh, she wanted me to go to the same dentist she was going and every time we I went there or my wife went there we had to go back multiple times to get that same thing done so we switched here just because we don't have to come back again for the same thing because it wasn't done right it's always done right I was anxious before having an implant because they you know um, drill down into your jawbone and put the implant in there and all this stuff but um, I was concerned a little bit but after the procedure, I really had no problems. It went fantastic, um, no issues. The commonality between me and Dr. Waddell is continuous education. You know, he's, he's been going to school and that's where he put in my implant, right? He, he invests in his education after so many years of experience. That's a big thing for me and I can relate to it because I'm doing the same thing in my career. So he's, every day he's working towards getting better and better and better. Whether it's cleaning, whether it's, you know, pulling your wisdom teeth out or whether it's an implant, I would definitely recommend Dr. Waddell. So again, that video does a great job of describing what Waddell Dental does and how it helps people. And uh, we'll talk more about budget later in the webinar here, but testimonials are just a wonderful place to start if you're thinking about ways to get that YouTube channel populated. 
Our final uh, example of actual video that we're going to show today is different from the previous ones in that it really doesn't follow that narrative storytelling format. But I've included it here today because just because your video doesn't follow that narrative format doesn't mean that video isn't still a great tool to promote your business. In this case, the Greater Twin Cities United Way had a very important and exclusive uh, fundraising event coming up that was held at U.S. Bank Stadium, and the video does a great job of promoting that event with well-known CEOs and generating generating excitement based on the location and who is going to be there. So let's take a look. Hi, everybody. I'm Doug Baker from Ecolab. And I'm Robbie Norman from Thor Companies. And we're here to personally invite you to a one-of-a-kind of event hosted by United Way with the generous support of its board of directors. On October 25th, right here at U.S. Bank Stadium, We'll gather for Together We Thrive. This will be an unforgettable night you don't want to miss. As a longtime supporter of United Way, I know there are many caring individuals like you who want to end poverty in the Twin Cities. At this special event, you can see how your gift can change lives by fueling United Way's impact in education, homelessness, and hunger. I know our neighbors need our help. One in four people in the greater Twin Cities live in poverty. Over 7,500 people don't have a safe place to sleep at night. And in 2024, nearly half a million jobs will go unfilled due to workforce gaps. In the Twin Cities, we won't leave anyone behind. And we can't do it without you. Together, we can build a vibrant community. Together, we can make the Twin Cities a place where all people thrive. We look forward to meeting you on October 25th and making a life-changing difference together. Please register today. So again, video is a great way to generate excitement based on the location and who would be at that event. So if you've got an event coming up for your company or your organization that you want to promote and get a lot of people to attend, I would really encourage you to think about that as an option of a way that you might use video for your session. A final use of video storytelling that we're going to talk about today is just really solidifying your brand, <clears throat> excuse me, online and search engine optimization. As you can see, we've got a screen grab of Positive Light Media's YouTube channel, and we're going to talk more about how to do that, but obviously, improving how your brand looks online is going to be a very important use of video storytelling. All right, let's move on to talking about your video storytelling team. And the title of this, uh, or the header of this slide is that the videographer is not equal to the video storyteller producer. I wanna take a moment to talk about that because of the fact that you will often hear these terms used interchangeably. So somebody will say, I wanna create a video about something and I need to hire a videographer to do that. And a videographer is a very talented person, but we wanna understand what, the two, what these two key roles do so that we can take advantage of it as we're planning what we're going to do. So the videographer's primary concerns are that they are concerned with camera operation and composition and lighting and making sure that everything in that frame of that video looks absolutely as stellar as possible. On the other hand, our video storyteller producer is really somebody who is a leader. They might be writing your script and conducting interviews and making sure that everybody on camera feels very at ease doing something that's a little bit out of uh, many people's comfort zones. They're organizing all of the details that it takes to make sure that your story is told well, and they're really developing a vision with you and for you to decide how that's all going to look. So the good news in a community like the Twin Cities is that you will often 
be fortunate and find somebody who can do all of these things, but it's not a given that your uh, video storyteller producer has the wherewithal to make sure that everything looks awesome in the frame. And by the same token, it may be that your videographer is great at uh, shooting beautiful images that are well lit and composed, but they might not be the best at the interviewing skills. So it's important to understand uh, where one leaves off and the other begins. So with that, you might wonder, well, which one should I hire for my upcoming project? And my recommendation is that if you have a project that requires minimal editing, perhaps it's a, a talking head giving a quick announcement that's going to have a short shelf life, well, then clearly a videographer is probably who you want to hire for that. And another thing that I would say about that is that uh, perhaps you plan to do some editing yourself and you don't have the equipment for the videography piece then absolutely a videographer is what you want to go with on the other hand if you know that your story has a complicated narrative and you want to make sure that this person can really do a great job of interviewing the content out of the people who are going to be on camera and making sure that you've got a good long shelf life you probably are going to lean more toward the video storyteller producer end of that role. And again, you may find somebody that can do all of these things, but you want to make sure that you understand the differences as you go out to shop for these services. Finally, another thing that I really want to hit home today is that there are three ways to make sure that you get the most value out of your storytelling team. And those three ways are to plan, plan, and plan some more. The best way to make sure that you get great value out of your storytelling team is to make sure that you plan ahead. I can't tell you the number of times that I've heard stories over the years of people getting to the point where they've got their crew put together and now it's time to do the shoot and they don't know exactly what, uh, what they want to accomplish until they've got this team assembled. And it is so much better to make those decisions about what you hope to accomplish around the coffee table or around the boardroom table or the conference room table because especially when you get into larger projects where there's going to be multiple people on the crew, like perhaps the the videographer and the makeup artist and the lighting person and the audio person, all of these people charge by the half day and day rate typically. So regardless of whether you've planned ahead well or not, it costs the same. And uh, there's no way to have a budget get out of hand more quickly than not to plan ahead. So be sure that you uh, take the time to, to do that. All right, let's get into talking about length. Oftentimes people will come to me and they'll say, I need to create a 10 to 15 minute video about my topic matter. And the thing that I always tell people is that your video needs to be long enough to tell the story and short enough to maintain engagement. And within that idea, less is more, but don't get tied down to a given number of minutes. And I think as we're talking about length, that it's helpful to talk about an example that we're all kind of familiar with. Most of us have watched a 30 minute newscast at some point but you might be surprised to learn that once you subtract out the commercials that you have roughly 20 minutes give or take of content and within that 20 minutes the longest most in-depth story might be about six minutes with most stories averaging one and a half to two minutes and your shortest story being as little as 20 seconds now, this is not meant to be prescriptive, but it should get us thinking about what our viewer and what our person that we're targeting is used to. So keep that in mind and use that as a way to think about how does the story I'm telling compare to something that's been produced for a national newscast. 
feeding off of that idea, I think it's important to remind people that as your video gets longer, you're going to want to make sure that your production quality and your level of engagement is higher. To give an example, if you've got a very short 15 to 30 second announcement that you want to make about something in your business, it may be that a quick talking head without a whole lot of uh, production value is absolutely going to meet your needs. However, if you're doing something with more of that narrative content and multiple people being interviewed and multiple things being shown, you're going to want to make sure that your production quality is such that you maintain the engagement of your viewer. All right, let's talk about optimizing your video for SEO. And while there are a number of ways to optimize your video for SEO that we're not going to be able to get into today, we really want to focus on YouTube because YouTube is such an incredibly big player in this conversation. And the reason for that being so important is that YouTube is owned by Google. And because of the fact that YouTube is owned by Google, it has an incredibly significant impact on your search engine optimization. And just to tell you a quick little story about that, even though I am in the video production and storytelling business, we didn't have a robust YouTube presence for positive light media until recently. And by implementing the changes that we're going to talk about today and by getting that YouTube channel set up, Positive Light Media was able to move to page one from the page six for the search video production Twin Cities. I think that that is just incredibly memorable because let's face it, if you're trying to be found, you can't, you can't be found if you're on page six. So that's uh, just incredibly important. All right, so remember, it matters. You want to use active links to your company's website and make sure that you do that soon. So your action items for today, and I just can't overemphasize the importance for the, of this, is to create your YouTube channel and to optimize it. And I'm going to take just a brief pause here because I see that uh, Amy has some questions. Amy, do you have any questions that are that uh, you'd like to ask right now, or do you want to wait until the end? You know, we've got just a couple of comments that were uh, popping in, so I thought if it's okay, we'll, we'll just get some of the questions answered now, and then we'll do some more uh, towards the end as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. So Judy had a quick question. She just actually chatted out to the whole group. How long was that Folgers commercial, Tim? Do you know off the top of your head? So that was a 30 second spot. Oh my yep. goodness. And yep. what, what an amazing story it told in 30 seconds and what a great example of how much you can do with well-constructed time. Absolutely love that. Um, yeah. So I wanted to share just a couple of comments that came in that weren't necessarily um, questions for you. Um, someone had shared the very good point of the quality of your camera, so so not having a shaky camera. And it, it made me personally think of how for about 10 minutes, we all thought that was cool when Blair Witch, which the Blair Witch Project came out, you know, and we we're like, oh, how authentic. And then we're all over it, right? Because it is hard to watch. And so just another reminder of something that um, can can be of great value. So I have got two people saying they can't hear us. Tim, you can hear me, right? Oh, no, yeah. apparently we're back. Okay, so only uh, only two, so hopefully nobody else is having trouble hearing us. All right, so one of the questions we did have um, was related to getting video testimonials, and I think that this is a question that a lot of people um, are very interested in, and it was a. We were kind of wondering, is that something you would use a videogra videographer for? Because you know your business, you know what questions to ask, so you would be on the other side of those questions. Or is it something that a video storyteller would work with the business owner on to craft the right questions, get those kind of um, really memorable responses? Which would you recommend, Tim? I think. I think in that. I would 
highly recommend the, uh, um, the video storyteller producer coming up with good questions with the uh, with with the business owner so that we can get a sense of what the you know what it is that we want to get out of that experience and I think uh, I think that's generally the approach I would take and one thing about interviewing people on camera I don't generally recommend unless uh, somebody's had a lot of coaching that your average person interview the on-camera testimonial giver because one of the things that is difficult or different about doing interviews for a testimonial for example or really for any video is that uh, we have this tendency when we're having a conversation with someone to interject with with our own voice that we hear what they're saying and and things of that nature so one of the things that i've had to work very hard at over the years as i as i uh, hone my own interviewing skills is that i need to sit there and be very quiet and act very animated so that the person on camera knows that yes i hear them and i like what they're saying and i want them to to tell me more and uh can't tell you the number of times when i've had to edit an interview over the years where the interviewer has not really taken the need to be this way to to heart and now i'm stuck editing out all those little grunts yeah. and noises that the interviewer makes so that that can be a kind of a technical challenge I've always found that one of the most interesting things about being a good interview is how hard it is and how important it is to not talk uh, right. because it's just such a natural part of, of conversation. So, um, okay, that's fantastic. So we did have one question chatted out to the wider audience, which I think will be our, our last one for this kind of midpoint and, and maybe even an, a nice segue. Um, we had someone just chat in for a clarification on what exactly optimizing um youtube would mean and yeah. uh, if so if that's something you just want to run with then that would be kind of the end of our little q a for for now but again just a reminder to the audience please go ahead and keep chatting questions in you're doing uh, awesome with that you can chat them privately to amy or out to the whole audience absolutely well i really appreciate that question about optimizing the youtube channel because uh that's what we're going to talk about next so when we talk about optimizing your YouTube channel, what is just vitally important here is that we have an active link back to your website that goes in the description box of each and every one of your YouTube videos. So I've got a screen grab of one of my videos that I have on YouTube. And you'll note here that the very first thing that I have in that description is HTTP colon slash slash positivelightmedia.com, as well as words describing my business, who I am, and where I'm located. And I just really want to emphasize that even though it's not aesthetically pleasing, and oftentimes you'll see people drop this, the HTTP colon slash slash is absolutely vital here because without that, YouTube will not turn it into an active link when somebody looks at this video and Google will not see it as an active link either. And I think as I've been evaluating my own uh, business website's performance, that getting this corrected is what really got me from page six to page one for how I want to be found. Additionally, within your YouTube channel, you've got a field here for tags. And this is a place where we put words and terms by which we know we want to be found when somebody goes and does that Google search for us in our business. In my case, I wanted to be found for things like video production, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Twin Cities, video storytelling. And getting that stuff in there is really as simple as, in my case, typing video production, separating it with a comma, typing St. Paul, separating it with a comma, and so forth. So it's this is really 
not terribly difficult. And I think to me, that's what's so exciting about this is that it's not hard. You don't have to be a uh, an expert on how to uh, design a website or do any of that really technical stuff. It's really as simple as pulling up this slide in my presentation and applying that to your own uh, YouTube channels and content. Um, from there, another thing that is so vitally important is this transcription and captioning piece. And in a word, yes, you should absolutely do this with each and every one of your videos. Don't skimp on this. Just go ahead and do it. There really is no economical barrier to captioning your videos these days. You can get it done for an average of about a dollar a minute through a service like Rev.com. And Rev.com is simply a, an online service where you can provide them with a, a link to your YouTube video or you can upload audio or video. And they use a combination of computer technology and real live humans to make sure that your video is transcribed well. And the other piece of that is that, and we're not gonna go over the nitty gritty of how to do this on your YouTube channel, but YouTube allows you to attach and upload uh, captioning files to your YouTube channel and to that specific video. So by doing that, all of the words that get said about your video in your are now part of how Google can search for you and how you can be found. So it's just incredibly important to do that. And I really want to take a moment here just to talk about the accuracy piece of using a service like rep.com. There is a there is an option on YouTube to automatically transcribe your videos with computer technology. And if you take away one thing about this transcription and captioning piece, I'm just going to ask you to step away from the automatic captioning button on YouTube. Some of the things that it does are so embarrassing it will do things like uh, misspelling your name and the name of your business. I had a past client I was checking up on recently and what YouTube put up there when she introduced herself and said her name had absolutely no resemblance to what her name actually was and what it made up for the name of the business was equally as embarrassing. And given that the, uh, given that it is so cheap to do this, there's just absolutely no reason not to use a service like rev.com. The other thing that I'd like to point out here is that by captioning your videos, your videos can be read without audio. So perhaps you're scrolling through a feed on LinkedIn and you see those words, it is just, it, it's another way for somebody to become interested in your content. I have somebody here asking what uh, captioning is, and I'm just gonna address that quickly. Captioning is the opportunity to see the words going by on the screen. And uh, transcribing is something that you would do. Transcribing is actually the act of typing the words that get said. So really these two things go hand in hand, but oftentimes you'll hear the words uh, transcription and captioning used somewhat interchangeably. So I just want you to make sure that you understand that, that they are pretty much the same thing with transcription being the actual act of getting it done for you. Finally, the other thing that I wanna point out here is that the deaf and hard of hearing community really appreciates it when you caption your content. I've had a number of, of uh, opportunities over the years to work with the deaf and hard of hearing community on video. And uh, one thing that I hear over and over again is that there is still just a, a whole array of content that isn't getting captioned. So if you really wanna stand out to that group, um, this is a great way to do that. 
I see a question from Judy asking about how you add captions to the screen. In the case of YouTube, it's as simple as going to a service like rev.com that are going to give you a, a variety of different file types to choose from. The file type that I use is called an SRT, like Sam Rachel Thomas file. And it is as simple as uh, adding that to your YouTube video that you've gotten the captions done for. And then when the user watches your video, they can decide whether they want to have those captions displayed or not by simply clicking the CC button at the bottom of the video player. So uh, Judy and anybody else who hasn't experimented with this, I would encourage you to go out and look at some uh, content on YouTube and hit that CC button and you should be able to turn that on and off and, and see what that looks like. All right, so again, I can't overemphasize the fact that there is simply no reason not to use a service like uh, uh, rev.com to capture your videos. Uh, agree with Mary Pat and her chat that she's put out there that the public schools require SRT files. And uh, that's something that I've uh, dealt with in my work working for the Minnesota State Colleges and the universities uh, once upon a time. And it is just, uh, especially if you're doing anything for government or public consumption, it's really a no brainer that you need to caption your videos. And in many cases, it uh, follows the accessibility laws that you need to be able to do this. So let's uh, move on here and talk a little bit about something that I'm certain that you're all wondering about, which is how much money should I expect to invest if I have to hire somebody to create a video for me? And this uh, cost is gonna vary depending on what type of an organization you work for and what kind of budget you have, of course. But what we, what we have found at Positive Light Media is that when we're dealing with uh, smaller businesses and nonprofits and things of that nature, that our costs tend to vary according to this bell curve displayed on the screen. There are things that get created, but not as many things that get created that are under 5,000. At the other end of the spectrum, there are not as many things that get created that are over 20,000. But the key here is that there are a lot of things that get created across the spectrum. Also wanna take a moment just to talk about, uh, about how you can save money here, because I am certain that there are people out there that are looking at this and thinking, well, gosh, Tim, there's no way that I can afford to spend $5,000 on getting a, a story told for my business. So I think this is a great place to talk again about the videographer versus the video storyteller. It might be that you can afford to hire a video storyteller and you have the interest, desire, or skills in doing the editing yourself. And this is a great way to save money. You can hire a videographer. They can come out for a day and make sure that uh, everything inside the frame of that video looks absolutely stellar for you. On the other hand, it may be that you have shot something and you had the, the skills and the equipment to do that well, but you just don't have the time, interest, or or whatever in getting it edited. And that's when you can hire a professional to help you get it edited. The other thing that I would really encourage you to take a look at if you are on LinkedIn is that LinkedIn Learning has some wonderful resources. They've recently acquired uh, the uh, training, software training organization that you might be familiar with called lynda.com and all of that content is migrated to their platform. And it's a wonderful way to learn about uh, editing and shooting and, and uh, possibly even getting accessories for your iPhone or for whatever camera you have to make sure that the uh, 
that the video and audio look and sound is as stellar as possible. So don't let this cost frighten you. It's something to aspire to if if you're not ready for that piece of the investment. But there's absolutely no reason for you to not start creating that YouTube channel and getting some content out there. I also think that it is uh, really helpful if I just give you examples of where some of our videos at Positive Light Media have fallen a, on the cost spectrum. And hopefully this is encouraging to you to see this graphic. You'll note that at the $5,000 give or take end of the spectrum that we have a number of wonderful looking things here. We've got videos that uh, had talking heads in them or videos that took less than a day in the field to produce. As we move uh, further to the right on the cost spectrum, we've got videos that perhaps had more uh, graphic design that needed to take place in order to get them completed, or perhaps they had more, uh, more effort in terms of how many days and how many locations and how big the crews were. But the really good news here is that there is just a whole host of opportunity within that cost spectrum. So really would encourage you to think about what is your budget and what can you do to start creating good content to help your business get found online. So with that, we are going to move on to your questions. And I see that some things have been popping in and I will uh, ask Amy to. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we've had quite an active conversation happening in the yeah. chat. So that's. I'm uh, trying to not let it distract me, but I'm, I'm anxious <laughs> to answer some questions. I know. For those of you that haven't ever facilitated a webinar, um, hats off to Tim for ignoring those little bubbles because it's so hard to, to just keep talking when you know people are having these great conversations offline. So um, one uh, question that we were going back and forth about, and Tim, I do have some insight on this from a social media standpoint, but specifically from a video standpoint, we're wondering your thoughts on how video can help you target new customers. And just to, to share, um, Bree sent this in and expanded on it a little bit, um, not just with SEO, but how do you create a video that will attract the attention of people who aren't already your follower on social media or Facebook? Any thoughts on that? Well, I think that, I think that the key to that is really the shareability of your content because the way that your the way that your video or really anything that you're posting online gets more attention is by getting that core network that you already have to be interested in it interested in your content and interested enough to share it with others and i think that's really the that's probably the biggest uh challenge that we faced as far as as doing that is how do we how do we get our core audience that already knows us, likes us, and trusts us to share it with the other people that they care about, either in their business life or in their personal life? Because that's really how those things gain legs if you think about it. And from a social media standpoint, we, of course, as strategists, we at NISM get this question all the time. And if some of our strategists also want to chime in on the chat, that would be um, great as well. But the first thing that always uh, comes to mind for me when talking to uh, clients about this is focusing on what questions people kind of on the fringe of your community are asking. So um, sometimes one of the easiest ways it is a little bit through SEO, I guess, but it's to just really think about the language being used so that you do get pulled in on those uh, search results. So for example, if we write a social media policy for someone uh, and we are talking about how we do this and we're sharing this and the importance of social media policy and social media policy and blah, 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 and, and we just keep saying that over and over again, we might be missing the people who are looking for rules about posting on Facebook. Or, you know, like, because they're not in our community yet, they they don't know the 
quote, right way to ask for what they need. Um, and so I find it very beneficial in across all kinds of industries to just take time to sit down and say, OK, we've got our core audience. We know who we're talking to. We know what they're looking for. What what are who are what are those people that we haven't connected with? What are they saying and what are they talking about? Because sometimes it's just kind of a, a little bit of a gap in, in language. That's that's kind of interesting. Um, and the other piece, which I think we saw a lot of uh, with the examples at the beginning, I think a lot of it is creating video that's just flat out interesting and enjoyable, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't know about you, but the, the Luther Seminary video with the little girl sitting on the bench, I just, I mean, that's exactly the kind of thing that I would share on Facebook because like I, you know, and I used to teach in early childhood and I mean, there could be a million, maybe I didn't get enough love as a child. I don't know, but and there's all kinds of reasons why um, different pieces speak to different people, but it. I, I think it's it's about avoiding that direct buy my product. It's blah blah blah. It makes yes. it something that people want to share. Absolutely, and I, one thing that I that I uh, think is kind of fun to share about that video. That's actually my daughter sitting on the park bench, and it took a long time to film that scene. And uh, I'm here to tell you that by the time we got done filming that scene, she was not acting when it came to looking pouty and, and sad and, and feeling left out and all that. So that was really just a, a glorious moment, especially when she was handed the ball and finally invited to play. We so, didn't have to ask her to play up the fact that she was happy. So going to, work, going to work with dad that day wasn't all fun, huh? <laughs> no, absolutely not, but I appreciate her help. We did have another question about international video. And if you have worked with um, creating video in multiple languages, um, or if, and if you have any tips on that when it comes to how people have posted that uh, and shared that or anything along those lines. You know, that's something that I've uh, worked with a whole lot, other than the fact that uh, back when I did a lot of video with uh, the deaf and hard of hearing community that we had to translate and, and do that type of thing. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly here again, and this is another great place to put a shout out to Rev.com. They also offer uh, translation services. So that if you want to do uh, uh, captioning or subtitling in another language, they are a wonderful resource uh, for doing that so that you don't lose people from that standpoint. Um, I know personally, I did have one client um, around who worked around the world. And one thing that we did, too, was we focused on creating. So the bulk of our work was in English, but we always saved about 40, 30 to 40 percent um, that had uh, that did that told a story without language. Right. So like um, the Folgers commercial, it does, does have the audio at the beginning, audio at the end. Um, but really the bulk of that story there, there's no, I guess there's writing on the coffee can, but it's, it's really not language based. You, you can get the whole feeling of the story with, with no words at all. Yeah. Um, Tim, you got a, another question. Could you talk a little bit about the type of equipment you regularly use, including the brand and model of camera, as well as editing software and equipment? Yeah, so I'm uh, happy to share about that. One thing, though, that I that I uh, love to say with regard to this is that, uh, in spite of the fact that I use a Sony FS7 4K camera and I edit with a program called Avid Media Composer, that I don't consider myself to be a good storyteller because I shoot with Sony cameras and edit with Avid Media Composer. Um, my favorite example of this is that you are not a good writer because you use uh, Microsoft Word or a pencil. And really, this is just a, a wonderful way to uh, make sure that it looks as, as good as possible on camera. 
but uh, you know, Ansel Adams wasn't a great landscape photographer because he had an eight by ten view camera, but he sure could make big enlargements because of it. Um, so uh, that's what I use. I think it is important. And again, just to repeat that, the type of camera that I use is a Sony FS, as in Frank Sam Seven. And it is a, it's a 4K camera, and I've got uh, quite a bit invested in uh, lenses and other accessories and equipment for it. But it is uh, it's an incredibly good camera, and it meets my needs and the needs of my clients. Uh, but you know, you can tell a great story with a whole variety of uh, other equipment. It's really about uh, what you put in that frame. In my case, it uh, really met my needs well because the uh, footage that I shoot with it works really well with my computer. Uh, one thing that can be challenging about the cheaper cameras and even some of the iPhone footage and and other lower end products like that is that in spite of the fact that the video looks very good when you look at it on your uh, monitor or your TV or whatever the case might be, it, uh, some of the codecs that they use, and a codec is just a fancy word for how it, uh, how it turns what it sees into video. Um, sometimes the uh, lower end cameras are really hard on computers so that when you're editing, you get a lot of stuttering and, and it takes a long time for it to, uh, to uh, put out the final product for you. So as professionals, we like to use uh, more expensive cameras that are easier on the computer when we're actually editing. Great, thanks so much for, for clarifying that. I know there's so many great tools out there. Um, and I just wanna remind you, we're almost out of time, but I just wanna remind everyone that you'll get a follow-up email, but please do connect with uh, Positive Light Media, connect with him. Oh my goodness, it's almost like we planned that, Tim. That was amazing. Um, if you... <laughs> Uh, if you haven't already, please um, seek him out. I know NISM has found him to be a, a great resource, wonderful to uh, to work with, very informative. Uh, so much of the stuff, if you're familiar with the work that NISM does, uh, you know, we really focus on high quality strategic work, which is very much in line with the work that uh, Tim does, uh, and we also heard him talk about that uh, importance of being flexible and, and helping people and meeting people where they are to get them to where they need to be. So uh, again, thank you so much to um, Tim for the presentation today. Thanks to everyone who uh, joined us and participated in that active chat room. And thanks to everyone listening to the recording. We hope you found that uh, really valuable as well. With that, enjoy the rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you all on a future NISM webinar.